Hey guys, in a previous video, I told you about 10 reasons to buy a MacBook instead of a PC laptop. But this doesn't mean they are for everyone. Are there any reasons to choose a PC laptop instead? Well, in this video, we will talk about 10 reasons why you should buy a PC laptop instead of a MacBook. Windows laptops are better than Mac because Windows laptops literally come in all shapes and sizes. You can build one from scratch or you can build the configuration you want. The Windows platform prides itself on the number of options available and that's ultimately its most important strength over Mac. You can choose from gaming laptops, budget options and even two-in-ones. But the well is far deeper than that. Want a high repairable laptop that you can swap all the parts out for? How about a super compact laptop? or just a laptop that hits the perfect sweet spot of all your hobbies and computing needs. Well, you can find those in a Windows ecosystem. It's the ecosystem of competition within the world of Windows that helps provide this vast web of laptop options. You see, a company like Dell or Lenovo doesn't compete only with Apple. It also has all of its Windows uh, rivals to worry about. The same goes for processors, graphic cards, and display technologies. All that leads to tighter differentiation more experiments and cheaper prices. Also, new technologies tend to arrive first on the PC side, since Apple is way more conservative in its adoption. For example, PC laptops have had high refresh rate screens years before they finally arrived on the new MacBook Pros with 120Hz promotion. But they are still not a match to what you can find on a PC laptop if you're a gamer, like a 360Hz screen or even a crazy 480Hz on the Alienware X17 R2. People have been asking for touchscreens on Macs for many, many years, and Apple has always resisted. Outside of the failure that was the touch bar, MacBooks have touchscreens for the iPad. But if you want a laptop with a touchscreen, or even a more adventurous laptop form factor, there's plenty of experimentation happening in the Windows world. Most laptops offer a touchscreen as a configuration option, and they're usually not too expensive. More than that, laptops with 360 hinges are popular too, allowing for different posters such as tent or presentation mode. The Surface Laptop Studio is a good example of this, which is designed around its unique hinge and rotation screen. Unique designs extend beyond just two-in-ones though. There are interesting laptops with two screens, like the Asus ZenBook Dio, that is perfect for content creation, or the upcoming Windows tablet with foldable screens. These are niche, yes, but if you just happen to fall into that niche, they could be exactly what you're looking for. Another area where Windows laptops excel is the input method. You can get a touchscreen Windows laptop attach a gaming mouse with the custom map buttons, or even use a pen. While Mac intuitive gestures and shortcuts make things easier, a touchscreen and a pen input is a major miss on the Apple side of things. If you go for Apple, you'll have to buy an iPad and a MacBook if you want a tablet and a full-blown laptop. On the Windows side, buy any laptop with a touch and pen input, and you'll have both devices in one. It's also worth mentioning that touchscreen optimization is one of the key features of Windows 11, and it works perfectly. Also, there are usually more ports on a Windows laptop than a MacBook. Of course, the new MacBook Pros come with more ports, but if you look at anything in the low or the mid-range, the port selection on the Apple side is very poor, unless you're a fan of dongles. When you buy a Windows laptop, you can choose the configuration you want. You can also choose if you want a touch input or a 360 notebook. If that's not enough, there is the upgradeability. You can future-proof your Windows system by literally swapping out any component as per your liking. If a 256GB SSD is not enough, you'll probably find a 512GB one. If 8GB of RAM doesn't cut it for you, you can always get an upgrade. In the case of Mac, this is a one-time choice. You can choose the configuration you want at the time of ordering your Mac. The only Mac that you can upgrade this time is the Mac Pro, which starts at around $5,000 all the way to $50,000. If you go for a Windows laptop, you can always upgrade the configuration later when you need to. Mostly the RAM and the SSD are the easy upgrade, but there are some cases where you can actually upgrade even the CPU or the GPU. 
PC gaming is the most obvious reason to stick with Windows, and it's where the platform has a complete monopoly. Despite the excitement over the M1 Max graphic capabilities, Apple doesn't seem interested in pursuing that path for the Mac Pro. It even has a 120Hz ProMotion screen, but there is a severe lack of AAA titles available on the Mac. And unless you count what's on the Apple Arcade, uh, you just won't find any games to utilize that graphics power. So yes, Windows has a huge platform for PC gamers. There are a lot of wide variety of gaming laptops to choose from, depending on your needs and budget. High-end gaming laptops like the Razer Blade, for example, have a sleek design, but still deliver exceptional performance. Meanwhile, cheaper options from the Predator or ROG put the focus squarely on gaming, both in performance and in style. The greatest strength of gaming on Windows, though, is having access to all those games, regardless of what laptop you happen to own. You might buy something like the Surface Laptop Studio or the Dell XBX15 for content creation and productivity, but you can also play a few rounds of Halo Infinite when you want to. Windows laptops come in all shapes and sizes and configurations. They also come at all price ranges. You can get a decent Windows laptop for as low as $300. This effectiveness continues to shine when you want to upgrade your laptop. New components for Windows laptops are usually more affordable than Macs. They're also available from various manufacturers, so you can choose which one fits the bill for you. The M1 MacBook Air is a really good deal. It's far more powerful than most of the laptops you can buy for $1,000 or even $8.99 with the education discount. But if you need a laptop cheaper than that, you're out of luck. Windows laptops, on the other hand, excel in the price range of $500 to $1,000. There are fantastic budget laptops you can buy for $600 or even $700 that are perfect for students and people with more basic computing needs. If you're only using your laptop for web browsing, word processing, and social media, you probably don't need anything with more performance. So you can go with a cheap Chromebook, for example, and there are plenty to choose from. Moving on with the cost effectiveness. Windows laptops are way better than Macs in terms of the repair cost. They won't burn a hole in your pocket for a keyboard replacement or a display change. Also, if you're a power user, a Windows machine is a DIY project with many possibilities. You can repair and replace components yourself. If not, Decent third-party technicians are always available everywhere to fix the machine for you. For instance, if your SSD or RAM fails, it's an easy fix at your local shop or by doing it yourself. Since PC components are not proprietary, anyone can buy them off eBay or Amazon. This was somehow possible on previous Intel Macs, but now with Apple Silicon Macs, it's impossible to do any kind of repair or upgrade yourself. And even local shops are not allowed to open a Mac and try to fix it for the risk of voiding warranty. There is even a current movement of right to repair, if you don't know about it, that wants to push Apple to be more supportive of self-repair. But Apple is fighting it tooth and nail. So overall, repairing your Windows laptop is way cheaper and accessible than MacBooks. The download.com file repository hosts over 55,000 freeware packages for Windows, to give you an idea. The same site has only a little over 4,500 packages for Mac. So there are tons of paid as well as free software available for Windows. Since the PC market share is bigger than Apple's, it simply means that there is even more interest from developers to create programs for that platform. That's also true for peripherals and accessories. You'll often find this software available for Windows, but not for Mac, like is the case for some RGB mice and keyboards. Windows 11 can also run Android apps, which means that you will get access to even more apps. Microsoft has been giving importance to Android devices since it announced the Your Phone app. The app allows you to connect your Android device to your Windows PC, receive and make calls and also receive notifications. Much like Apple ecosystem of devices that work seamlessly. As a long-term Mac user myself, I appreciate the Apple ecosystem every time I bring something from my Mac to my iPhone or vice versa. On the flip side, if you have other non-Apple devices, it becomes irritating because you can't use them with the Apple ecosystem. On Windows laptops, you can decide which apps you want to use and build your own ecosystem. For instance, your Samsung devices will have a better integration with a Windows laptop than a Mac. There's also the case of modular laptops on the Windows side that you can build from scratch to your liking. Like the Framework laptop, which is a modular, repairable, and upgradable notebook PC. 
It's the anti-MacBook, the laptop that promises to let you customize, repair, and upgrade it to an unprecedented degree, all while remaining affordable and ultra-portable. It's the most user-friendly approach to PC upgrade I've ever seen. As each swappable component is labeled with a QR code you can scan to get information on the part and a guide on how to replace it. Statistically speaking, Windows laptops make up for around 87% of the desktop market. It means if you're having a problem with your Windows machine, you'll find someone that will help you with it. That also means that on online forums or Reddit, it's more than likely that there is a workaround or solution for a similar kind of problem on Windows than on macOS. Since I have a Hackintosh, I still remember, for example, how my Elgato Camlink 4K had more discussions and solutions on Reddit for Windows, but nothing on macOS. The mass presence of Windows in office environment also leads to some software available for Windows only. So if you do work that required those programs, you might end up looking for ways to run Windows on Mac, which is not possible natively on the new Apple Silicon Mac since Bootcamp is no more. In that case, it just makes sense to get a Windows laptop. In conclusion, I would say that if you're looking for upgradability, more choices, more budget options, or if you're a gamer, then definitely get a Windows laptop. Check in the description for some of the PC laptops I recommend, depending on your use case. Just to be clear again, PC laptops are not for everyone. There are some cases where getting one doesn't even make sense. That's why I made a video about 10 reasons to get a MacBook instead of a PC laptop that you can watch here and my recommendation for those. So please like and subscribe to get more of this content. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.